Good, so our final presentation before um, afternoon tea is by Rick, and he's going to be talking about age and length based models and perhaps some approximations to that. So um, this follows from a couple specific questions that were posed in Mark's list of focus questions. Basically, we're asking the question, um, two questions. Does the general model need the capability to allow the distribution of length at age to change over time in order to allow the number, say, of faster growing fish to be removed at a greater rate than the overall numbers within the age length at age distribution. And secondly, if we can model link ages and length in the same population array, which two of the uh, uh, speakers today recommended, then can we then apply the same set of model code to model both age and length based assessment situations? So it could mean you only needed one set of code to do both of those jobs. Um, so clearly, any next generation model will have to have age as an independent variable. The reason is obvious, I think everybody knows that. Because age is homologous with time, they both, one year of age represents one year of time evolving so that you can relate changes in age numbers to mortality rate. And that's the basis of most of our assessments. Then the, but the question then becomes, why do we then need to include length as an additional dimension in our population array, if age is the fundamental quantity we want to know and from which much of fishery inference is based. There's several reasons for that, but some of them are the most important quantities that we use as model predictors that are fitted to data require the breakdown of the age, length at age distribution into body size. So if we want to predict catch in weight, then we need to know the numbers in each length class within that age uh, breakdown of, of links at age in order to accurately predict total catch by weight. Likewise, if we want to predict the numbers in different proportions of age, which is the second fundamental category of data that most of our age-based assessments use, as that cohort of length at age is growing across either legal minimum length or into the selected component of sizes, which is generally a function of the gear, those proportions at age will depend strongly on how much of that length at age distribution has now been captured by the gear. So it's a strong effect. The, the breakdown of proportions by age is therefore a highly dependent quantity on the distribution of lengths at age. And, uh, and if you're fitting to length distributions as well, then plainly you need to break down by lengths in order to do so. So all fishery models have to do this conversion of numbers by age, which is usually all that's represented in the population array, but divide those up by the sizes within that age group in order to, to be fitted to typical data sets that all of us generally have to, at our disposal. So, so one main benefit of explicit benefit of including length at age, which is fairly widely known, is what's called correcting for the Lisa Rosa Lee phenomenon. She was apparently one of the first female fishery scientists, published a paper in 1912, which predicted this phenomenon that we're still not accurately accounting for in most of our assessments, which is as those faster growing fish reach legal size, they get removed from the population at a much greater rate than the fish that still haven't reached the gear. So the, the shape of the length at age distribution has changed. The faster growing fish are less abundant, and what that does is compress that a length asymmetric mortality, compresses the length at age distribution. You have fewer of the faster growing fish than of the overall dis normal distribution that one might suppose it occurs before those fish reach the fishable gear. Um, in addition, that's, that, I'll try to argue that that will also affect the inferences we make about proportions at age and the logistic selectivity itself. Um, since much of the catch is often of these partially recruited fish, where some of them are being removed rapidly and are so changing the shape of the distribution we would normally assume, which is all age-based models, well, let's just say many age-based models, 
just currently assume that, that normal distribution is fixed through all time. It ignores the fact that these faster growing fish are being removed and doesn't account for that change in the length and age distribution. One of the, so one of the advantages of including length and age specifically is to account for that phenomenon. Jeez. Um, sorry. I hit the wrong button. Um, secondly, here we go. So there, let's talk about the general categories of length and age models. Age-based, length-based models, but specifically age-based models can be divided up into a number of categories depending on how they break things down by the links within that age composition. So you can have um, age and length-based models that do explicitly account for the dynamic change, the removal of faster growing fish, or just generally the changes of length of numbers within leaked bins in each age group. And then you have the more standard age-only models, which account for, um, which are the majority in application and just assume no change in shape over time. Age-only models follow the numbers by age, but don't account for this change in shape. And um, age and length-based models do allow for that modification. Uh, yeah. I get that right. Age-only models can kind of be considered into three subcategories. In the old days of VPA, really the only length-based information that was assigned to each age group was the mean weight. Later, people started using when age um, length keys were implemented in an empirical fashion. Generally, what was done is within each length bin the proportions by age were allocated in order to compute length-based information within each age group. Nowadays, the way synthesis works is the stock synthesis works is it assumes a normal distribution for length at age, and it numerically computes an integral underneath that normal to compute the, the, the number of fish within each five center, centimeter bin within each age group. And that most of the standard synthesis models employ that approach. Uh, one, so what's happening there is, as you integrate on each five centimeter bin, you get the information about the numbers in that length. And, uh, and then when you sum that up to get the important crucial outputs that we need, like catch in total and weight, and the proportions that uh, have reached legal size. Now remember what's going to happen then is with the logistic, you'll multiply the probability of capture at each of those five centimeter length bins by the number of fish that are predicted to be within that bin to get the total number that are predicted. And so the age proportions by age, the, the number of proportions by age as those fish grow into legal size. Um, again, that's not accounting for any changes in the shape of that distribution over time. So the quest, fundamental question we're trying to address here with that background is, is it worth extending the population array to account for numbers by length and by age? There will be some computational trade-off. There'll be more programming involved and some extra work involved. Um, in particular, you'll have to add another dimension to the population array, which was discussed extensively by Nick Davies. Um, in addition, there will be some additional computation time. Now, back in the day, there was a, it was true that adding that additional uh, dimension to the population array, which greatly increases the number of uh, dimensions that need to be accounted for, really did slow things down enough for that to be a problem. But I don't think that is anymore. In my experience with the age and length-based models that we run, they run in a, a minute or two, sometimes 10 or 20 minutes when we have a spatial breakdown as well. So, and I think with platoons, it would be safe to say that because those are efficient in a way I'll explain in just a second as well, computation time is no longer really a constraint. So if we do want to accurately account for age and length-based processes, it would be smart to include length as an additional 
member of that population array. One of the main differences between uh, this description is that when you integrate growth into the process, um, which will happen in an, which would naturally be done in any situation in which you have age and length in the population array, that estimation of growth is going to be more accurate. At the same time, you're potentially going to be um, generating a more accurate description of the proportions by age in a way I'll explain in a second. And that will in turn feed back to estimating logistic selectivity better. So all three of those processes, selectivity, proportions at age, and growth will all be improved in accuracy. I would acknowledge that probably the amount of increase won't be substantial, but by all three of those processes being more accurately represented, the overall assessment will be improved. So that's, th that's the basic argument. At the time that these fish are growing into legal size, there's big differences in the levels of exploitation that are happening on fish at different positions along the length of age distribution. By capturing that improved uh, description of how mortality affects fish of different length within each age, the overall model description will be improved considerably. Um, now, building and supporting a generalized, this is the second important reason why including age and length in the same model could be quite useful, and addresses the second of Mark's two questions in this regard. That is, we know that building and supporting a model software, general like the one that Rick has been supporting for quite a number of years, is a very big job. If it would be possible to apply this software both to age-based assessments and length-based assessments, then clearly the amount of work involved would be reduced by something like a factor of two. So the savings in terms of money would be substantial. Um, assessments that account for population numbers by age and length within age are not used commonly these days. In South Australia, however, we have been running models that account for length, for age and length within age for a number of years. King George Whiting is one where we do that and have movement among five regions. Stock synthesis, and we, to do that, we use a method called slices that I'll explain in just a moment. Stock synthesis has incorporated a different approach to breaking things down by length within age groups called platoons that you folks are probably more familiar with which are smaller normal distributions that are added together, those individual normal distributions, the platoons, they can occur, incur separate levels of mortality based on where they are with respect to the logistic or other kind of selectivity curve. And that is how synthesis currently implements length and age-based models. There's been other approaches as well. One early example of an age and length based model was proposed by Doriso and Parma in 1988. Uh, Follow-up paper by Parma and Doriso in 1990. That was before the days we had MCMC and there was, the computational limitations would have been sufficient to prevent a full explicit breakdown by age and length within the population array. And what they did is adapted like a Bayesian style mathematical approach um, where in order to multiply the logistic selectivity through the length, normal length at age distribution, they adapted mathematics that was used by the Bayesians to do the same job where the, you multiply a logistic prior through a normal ba uh, posterior, to, uh, a normal likelihood to give a posterior that accounts for both of those processes. They were able to find an analytic solution that achieved that. Now, that is quite cool, beautiful even. However, it would be very difficult to apply that to the more general range of possible processes we wish to account for in modern assessment models. But that was one of the first, and to this day, the most elegant way that's been achieved. Platoons work in the following fashion. So those different lower colors represent different platoons. And the overall distribution in black 
is simply the sum of the different normal length of age distributions, each of those representing a different breakdown by size of the single age class. So this is kind of an extension of the whole notion of kernel density functions being added to give an overall distribution. And um, you can see that depending on how you, how wide you make each of the platoons, the standard deviation that's applied to them, and how the means of those different platoons are separated from each other, you can get a, a, the sum give very different shapes for the overall length and age distribution that you seek to represent. So it's quite flexible because, um, because these, the standard deviations of each of the platoons and the relative positions can be varied quite easily. Any possible shape can be achieved. The one tricky bit though is that the user needs to specify beforehand what those relative distributions, the standard deviations will be for each platoon and how far they be spread out. Generally, one simplification that's done with platoons is that the same, in order to grow the five platoons, which, which sum together give the total length of age distribution for each age, a single K is applied to all of the platoons, but separate um, L infinities are used. And that's how they're spread out and grown in such a way that you still maintain a coherent distribution of lengths at age across all the ages of the population. In South Australia, we applied this method called slices. It's simpler insofar as you just maintain, assume a single normal length at age distribution prior to reaching legal size. And these, in our small scale state fisheries, we all, always have legal minimum length as an important, that is the main form of selectivity. So what happens is, as the normal length at age is growing into legal size, I'll show this next slide first. As the length of age distribution is growing into legal size, the portion of that normal length of age distribution that, that crosses the legal minimum length line in that time step becomes a new length bin. And then what we do is just simply compute the probabilities underneath this curve that would represent the new slice compared to what was in the undersized distribution, that gives us a ratio, and then we transfer the numbers that were in the undersized into the, each newly created slice as that stock grows into legal, the legal size. One of the nice things about this is, and this is also true of platoons, by the way, is that once we put fish into that slice, they never transfer into other slices. They stay there. And that's reasonable if we assume that the original normal length at age distribution, which is the growth of an average fish, but not what's observed in the length at age, because what happens is faster growing fish are removed sooner. And this is an example of our garfish population, which did have quite high F. But what you see happens is that the relative numbers of fish in the faster growing slice is dramatically reduced compared to newly created slices because they've been subject to exploitation for three times as much. So what that means is the change in shape of the length at age distribution is explicitly accounted for. Faster, the, the reduced numbers of faster growing fish is explicit in the lower numbers represented in the faster growing slices. And one of the reasons why this approach and platoons are computationally not difficult to implement is because fish never move between slices. There's no need for length transition matrices, which is, which is the standard method of applying growth in length only uh, assessments. Only mortality affects the numbers in each slice subsequently. In addition, because we know about the change in the shape of the, of the length today, of lengths at age, when we go to fit this to a growth curve, the model knows that those fish have been removed because of a change in shape in that distribution, and so it avoids the bias that's associated with Rosalie. So it's computationally efficient. It assumes some kind of prior distribution, typically a normal for the fish before they reach legal size, but accounts for the change in shape of the distribution subsequently. More recently, 
Andre, along with his colleagues, Alan Axelrude and Cronenfein, have been testing the implications of building a length and age-based assessment formalism and applying it to either an age-only type data set, where we typically would apply an age-only model, or a length-only data set, which is typical of what we use for invertebrates. So what we find is that, and what they found, well, first let me explain. Um, these different colors represent the different platoons. So their underlying operating model used five platoons, and, and so does their overall assessment model. The difference is how they fit the data. What, what is of interest in this particular paper is they were able to apply an age and length based model to a length only assessment, which has not been tested before. And what they, what they basically have to do is, remember this is, these are the fish of the fastest growing platoon compared to the fish in the slowest growing platoon. Um, and that, that's, that's how the, the total numbers break down among the different platoons based on the different colors for that particular age. When they go to fit that to linked data though, they have to sum over not just all the fish in the different platoons of that age within that age bin, but then they have to sum up those numbers from all the ages because the data don't know about age. And that's how a length and age distribution in this context of platoons could potentially be applied to a length only assessment situation. It, by the way, the outcome was that it worked very well for fitting to size-based assessments. It struggled quite a bit more for the length-only situation, which was a bit surprising. So, I will skip that one. Now, what we're doing now is trying to test a comparison between slices and platoons using simulated data. In this case, rather than simulated data based on platoons themselves, which is what Andre and his co colleagues did in the last slide that I showed you, we're building an individual based model to generate simulated data. Now the big advantage of that is it has no assumptions in common with either slices or platoons, so it allows a more fair comparison. There's no underlying simulator, there's no assumptions that are being shared by the simulator and the estimator prior to testing. And um, so far, we, we don't have results to show you today, except I will present this, which is for the slice-based model, this just illustrates how that distribution grows into legal size and how that affects the numbers at age that would typically be observed. So once again, the model with growth integrated and with a logistic selectivity, which is very steep, right around 40 centimeters, when the length of age distribution is just barely reaching that size of, of capture, you get very low numbers. This is from 100 data sets too, so in most cases you wouldn't see any fish of that, of that age. And you can see that it's accurately picking up the fact that it, it re recognizes that logistic selectivity is only getting fish just above that selective size. As they grow, more and more fish will start to become evident to the fishery and so be represented in the age proportion data. Now, for example, suppose if summer represents these even numbers of half yearly age, age three, age four, and age five. At age three, the samples are only going to see around a thousand fish, relatively speaking. By age four, they'll see 24,000. And by age five, about 36,000. Those will be the relative proportions of, of catch proportions by age that we'll see in the data that we typically fit for age-based models. But by capturing explicitly the growth of these cohorts into legal size, we account for the, the strong effect of logistic gear selectivity on those model predicted proportions by age was so crucial for all the assessments that we undertake. So recommendations for a next generation only model, considering first just age-based assessments. It probably makes sense to still include these earlier kinds of age-based models, something like a VPA where you account for numbers at age, 
but the only length-based information is basically the mean weight. Sometimes VPA can still be useful. An intermediate between the two dot points I put in here, but we can call an empirical age length at each, age at length key, is one which I mentioned earlier where you literally take the explicit histograms of, of proportions by age for each length bin and apply those directly. That was quite a standard approach not too long ago, but would, would be easy to retain within the standard general framework. But most, most typically for, for age-only based models will be what synthesis does currently, which is it carves up the length at age distribution by integrating under each bin fixed bin of length and then fits those numbers or proportions by bin um, to both numbers by length and when available numbers by age. Five minutes. The fundamental question though is whether it's worth extending this to include dynamical lengths as well because there's some computational trade-offs involved, some extra programming. We believe that it makes sense to do so. And so it did the two previous authors that addressed this question today. And one way that this could be done quite simply is to retain platoons in pretty much the current form it's in with synthesis. The reason is clear. If the user wishes to choose just one platoon, that model reduces to the current standard age-based model, which is a normal distribution that doesn't change shape and there's no accounting for the fact that faster growing fish are removed sooner, but the standard age-based assessment is still easily applied. But when we wish to have a breakdown by length, the platoons allow that as well, because you can have faster growing platoons and slower growing platoons and have the faster removal of the faster growing platoons explicitly accounted for in the, in the outcome. So, that makes platoons one possible candidate for implementing age and length a very viable one. It would require very little additional, almost no additional complexity to reduce from the full age and length based assessment formalism back to the standard age only approach. Slices are not as generalizable as this platoons because you can't just specify one platoon and get back to the normal length at age distribution but they do require much less input from less experienced users. That is to say, because slices only have one normal length at age distribution, the user only has to specify or estimate the mean length at age and the standard deviation. In order to implement that, there would be no requirement for the user to figure out how to spread those platoons out and how wide to make them. Just the standard growth description, it's all that's necessary to implement slices. So that is still a possible consideration. Um, and, and, and remember, because both of them don't move fish around between either slices or bins, they're both computationally quite uh, expedient. Now the second of Mark's two questions are as follows. Do we try and build an age-based model that can apply to lengths only? Well, technically this should be possible. Numbers by age will always be in there. The question is, do we add numbers by length? Pant, Allen, Askin, Root, and Cronenfein show that it is possible to do length-based assessments with this kind of approach. Further work is needed to answer this question. And in conclusion, it's worth pointing out that there is no chance of building a single model that can be used for both age and length-based assessments if we don't include length in the population array. One big advantage of platoons is that if the user chooses to just set the number of platoons to one, it reduces to the standard approach. And that means that now conventional single, always normal length at age and dynamic length at age can both be easily implemented in the same overall coding structure. And in that case, dynamic length at age can be called upon when needed by adding more platoons. The, um, these are some papers that are relevant to the talk. Taylor and Mathot described platoons. We, mentioned, we described slices back in 2007. And Punt, these two papers now by Punt, Alan Askell, Root, and Cronin Fine were published in 2017. And lastly, hit the right button. We will 
welcome you all to the World Fishery Congress in Adelaide next year. It's a beautiful town. Um, I, I moved there 25 years ago. I thought that I'd be there for a year or two and I couldn't see any reason to leave. So it's a good place to go. We hope we'll see you down there in October 2020. Okay, thanks, Rick. Um, we don't really have any time for questions, but since I think it's the coffee break, we can slip in a few questions if anyone's got one. No, ask them now. <laughs> Overall. So, yeah. uh, any, any questions for, for Rick? Can, can I, sorry, can I just ask a bit of a naive question? Because maybe I don't. Why are you assuming the distribution of length around age is normal? We just get rid of Generally speaking, there can be any shape. Generally, a model modal shape, right? Because typically, when we observe links at age, that's what they look like. And it's certainly not uncommon in many of our samples to. To, to look or evaluate what the links at age look like, a normal is certainly not an uncommon shape. Uh, a log normal is also implementable within stock synthesis. We've done it, we've implemented slices with gamma distributions at times. Anything will work. It's just a matter of whether you can numerically integrate under the curve. That's the crucial limiting factor. Yeah, Malcolm. Uh, Rick, uh, is there any, oh, right, good. Is there any empirical evidence that cohorts do retain the same growth characteristics through time? Biologically, one would think that it's a function of food availability and where they are, and one might imagine them to go up and down with their growth. So what's the, what's the basis? What's the, what's the evidence? Well, there's, the no, there's nothing about either of these approaches that requires the growth of those cohorts to be the same through time or even... Um, or even um, among cohorts. The, the, as long as you can specify a model predicted mean length at age and standard deviation, all of these length, at age, length and age-based methods can be implemented. Uh, sorry, I thought you said once they enter a platoon, they never leave it. Ah, well, that's a different question. Uh, ah, okay. Do, it is an approximation. Well, it, it's it, just it an assumption we need to be explicitly aware of. That's right, right, saying. right. It, it's, it's just the sense that a fish that is the largest in its age group one year is unlikely to be the smallest fish in the age group the next year and then back to the largest. There's going to be some inertia in the growth process and this is just capitalizing on the expectation that there's some inertia and breaking it into three or five platoons preserves that concept of inertia and growth but still allows that there's some variation within the platoon. Uh, but not between the two. It, it, I mean, it, since there will be some variation in growth among individual fish, some fish will grow slower, some will grow faster, they will tend to cancel each other, and the, so what you're left with is a third order effect compared to the benefit of capturing the, say, second order effect of, of those faster growing fish definitely being removed at much greater rates, and so it allows you at least capture that probably more important process. I, I mean, I do understand the relative efficiency of cutting back to only five size classes, if you like. I mean, I've been implementing these things with, with uh, 200, and, sorry, 105 size classes for abalone. Um, mm. And yeah, I mean, it's reasonably quick, but it will be a lot quicker if there were only five. Um, on the other hand, the model I'm, I've used is it, it doesn't assume the, the, the growth is, is whatever growth transition matrix variation you've got in there could apply to any of the members. So, so I don't know, it'd be interesting to compare the two and see if there are differences. Well, the pl I, I see what you're saying. I mean, the one place where that could be an important, a more important factor is with invertebrates because their growth is so pliable. And there, you know, yeah, that's true. That would, those approximations can be less reliable. There. Uh, especially with abalone, yes. Yeah, but, okay. but the same inaccuracies can result with the standard inverted growth description, which is just growth increments, because those are also going to vary in all those same ways. 
Okay, so um, we can continue this discussion during the coffee break if you want. Um, but I think there's some important aspects here, particularly when creating a general model, whether we can have a length-based model and an age-based model coming from the same code or if we have to implement separate code. So we'll have that discussion later on maybe today.